you want to go look at them or you can see them? Uh, let's go look at them. Uh, these two are about, I had a friend that grew up here and he came to stay with me like a month ago. Mm -hmm. I was looking around my studio and kind of looking at everything they had going for this show and you know, he was born here. He grew up on 24th in Hampshire and was like one of the first friends I met when I moved here. You know Marcos. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's like, man, he's like, you left out some really obvious shit. And I was like, what? He's like, the giants, earthquakes, and fog. And I was like, wow, how could I not think to draw earthquakes and fog? But it's a hard thing to draw. Earthquakes is like a bummer. Yeah. You don't want to draw that. Like, he wants to look at something that lame. It's like, no one's looking forward to that. But then he told me the Native American myth for earthquakes is that the state of California and I looked this up there's like a northern American tribe or nor uh, northern Californian tribe that thinks that the state of California is made up of eight gigantic turtles all next to each other <laughs> and that when they argue we have earthquakes so this is kind of like the bear is the state of California with these giant turtles under them and they're like rubbing butts and getting mad at each other about it and that's when we have earthquakes <laughs> I just imagine like when they argue I picture their shells literally going like <laughs> like the plates <laughs> grinding and then the other one uh, is about a silver fox and how that's how we get the same thing. Like I looked up, when he said earthquakes and fog, I looked up the same Native American myth for uh, why we have fog. And it's supposedly this mythical silver fox that like, isn't, like rows a boat around the landmass over and over and as it's shedding its hair, like the fox's silver hair creates the fog. The fog. Which, I don't know. Sounds scientific. I don't like the idea that fog is really hairy. <laughs> it just seems gross. Yeah, it seems like, it seems like you could write something. <laughs> but uh, I like drawing silver foxes, so that was a fun one to paint. <laughs> but I finished it, you know, and like, I tried to make it feel like misty, you know, like I spattered a bunch of white on top of it when I was done so that it felt like that. You know, like when it's really thick and you actually feel beads of it, like hit you in the face, mm -hmm. or if you're on your bike and it like, hits you in the eye. Uh, I was trying to make like, like, like how, how do you explain that visually, you know, like, and that's kind of what I was... When I was done with it, Jade was like, yeah, it looks pretty cool. And we went outside to take a walk, and it was like literally exactly like that the night <laughs> I did it. And she was like, you're right, you're right. It's like hitting me in the face with big splotches. <laughs> so yeah, fog and earthquakes. One is a lot more fun than the other, but both things that we're known for. And something I like. Well, the earthquake part I like, because if it wasn't for that, even more jerks would move here. <laughs> you know, like earthquakes scare people away. When I go back east, people are like, oh my god, aren't you freaked out about earthquakes? And I'm like, yeah, but, you know, we only talk about that stuff to keep you jerks away. <laughs> Population control. What about uh, Norton behind you? Oh, man. Everybody's favorite San Franciscan anti-hero. The original, like, San what? Francisco self-invented anti-hero rebel crazy man. What's one of your, um, like, favorite aspects about Edward Norton, Emperor Norton? Joshua Norton made his own currency, I think might be my favorite thing. I'm really into bartering. Mm -hmm. I got a weird ass job and like I trade like a motherfucker, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I've traded you guys stuff. Yeah. I gave you t shirt art for beer. But like uh, you know, like he was all about it. He kinda made he kinda made himself this this sort of self invented local hero emperor kind of character. And he had so much local clout and respect that uh, he drew up his own currency and it was valued in like restaurants and bars and theaters and I just think that's badass. You and just follow like, in his footsteps. Yeah, I think this is as close as I can get. I'm not like a cool <laughs> enough dude that I can just like draw money and be like, look, here's my drawn money. Give me stuff. <laughs> give it five years. But I can go and give artwork to businesses and then they give me free stuff. So it's not it's the same, same idea. But definitely an inspiring dude and I like that, that part of his whole history. I didn't get a photo of behind you. What it? I can't really see can't it. You see it. It's dark, but it's Phoenix. Ah. That's like our other little character sort of symbol for the city, and he's not really an anti-hero. He's he didn't really like, um, go for the whole gold rush thing. Because I did so much it. the last time, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Ghost of the Barbary Coast thing was all yeah. about the dawn of the city's history. This one I wanted to do things that were... Because, you know, how it's like this. I feel like in the last two years, the city's really gone through a lot of change. And I've been home a lot more than I had been for years, so I'm starting to notice it more. You know, like the face of the city is having another one of its transient flip-overs, and I'm getting older, so my perspective on these new young people that are moving here is different. And it caused me to really look at the things that I still love about the place, the things that I see slipping away. Like, I didn't draw it, but, like, how all the movie theaters that I used to go to when I moved here aren't here anymore. And, yeah. like, all my favorite, like, grimy restaurants are being replaced by bougie restaurants. And, like, not all of that change is bad. 
but it is change, and the city is different. And this show was really for me like, okay, I've been home for a couple of years, not traveling as much. What is it about this place that I still love? Like, why am I still here? What do I still like about it? Like, a lot of that's historic things, like pieces of history that I'm really proud of that I think the world loves us for, and that I love about this place. But also like individual little special things that you kind of got to live here to know about. You know, like I did one drawing. It's just all my favorite burger spots, like weird. OG diner style burger spots and I drew some drawings that are my friends businesses that have contributed to the city and the community that I appreciate and respect um, like I said there's little pieces of history little pieces of like natural science kind of bullshit earthquakes fog um, landscape I drew a lot of the architectural things that I appreciate uh, you know it's, it's basically just like I wanted to illustrate 50 drawings that were the things that I still care about San Francisco, like the things I still love about the place, and the, thing, the reasons I still want to live here, and the things that make me proud to be a San Franciscan, I guess. And not just because the gold rush was here, because I kind of did that one to death, you know? Yeah. So, so why no cable cars? No, I'm just kidding. There is one. No, yeah. <laughs> Look, it's yeah. the invention of the cable car. 18... 54, I think. No, 1878. Oh. This dude that developed the cable car, you know the story, I'm sure. But, like, he, he, got the, he got the money, they built the cable car system, they trained all these drivers, and, like, opening day, I think it was the Clay Street was the first one ever. It went up and down Harley Hills. I think Clay was the first, like, Burley one. And they're there on opening day, and, like, all these drivers are trained, and everybody's looking at each other, and they're just like, like, I'm not doing it. <laughs> you know, you got just like, I don't want to do it. Even though they had all these guys that were supposed to be, like, the drivers of this new cable car line. And so for the first, like, I don't know if it was a day or a week, for the first few runs, the dude that actually designed it, conceived it, like, engineered the whole thing, actually had to be the, the driver. Because <laughs> no one trusted it. Yeah. So I drew him because it's a slow-moving way to get around, but it's also a very romantic, very San Francisco. And actually, on our way here, uh, I go up. Uh, what is it? What is that? Powell? Yeah, I go up Powell a lot when I come here. Like, to get out of my neighborhood, I take Powell to avoid all the tourists. Mm -hmm. And there's the part where it turns from Clay onto Powell to go up and over the hill down towards Fisher, or down towards uh, Union Square. And it actually made it a regular stop in the middle of an intersection. And I was like, ah, oh, stupid fucking cable car guy, like, get the fuck out of the way, like, trying to get here to meet you. But then we see this little ass old dude, like, old, like, 180 old, like, eh, like, with a cane. And they had the cable car guy stopped because he saw this little old guy and he knew that like that little guy is like is trying to get on the cable car because he has to get on this giant ass mountain. And I was like, oh, cable car guy, you're so nice. Like that little dude is like waving his cane. Like we saw him from a ways back. And I don't know, one of those times they were like, oh, the cable car is actually not just a, a tourist bag yeah. with a bunch of douchers on it, like filming the best vacation ever. It's like little old dudes need to get get up and over the hill because it's too big. When I lived on Pine Valley, I used to take it to Pier 39 for my first job at uh, Sunglass Hut. That you felt super fucking San Francisco. Because you used to be able to use your Fast Pass. Yeah. yeah. I used to, uh, the week I got here, like I, well, a couple weeks after I got here when I started school, my roommate Pete and I uh, used to bomb up and over through the hills down to Mount Hill to get to our school. And then after school, like the first couple days, uh, we'd walk back up. Either Mason or Powell, I don't remember. No, Mason, because that's where it comes from, the, the wharf. We'd walk back up Mason to get back to where we lived in uh, Lower Notch Hill or whatever. And, you know, we had our skateboards, we're like walking uphill, and the cable cars are rolling next to us, and we were like, oh, fuck it. So we just like pushed a couple times and grabbed onto it. And so, like, you know, we did this like two, three days in a row, thinking, like, oh, we're really tricky. Like, we fucking, we're beating the system. It's like snowboarding. And then, like, we ride to school, and then we tow the ski lift back to our house. <laughs> And literally, like, we hadn't even lived in the city in like, a couple of weeks. We were that young, naive, and dumb. And one day, like, well, after we'd gotten kind of used to our commute, we we're, like, hanging on the cable car, talking, and all of a sudden, my roommate's eyes, like, light up, and he kind of backs up. Right as he did, I let go, and, like, felt this fist go, and, like, just missed my cheek. And I look, and the cable car driver had literally just taken a fucking swing at my head. Wow. Like, not even, like, hey, let go or don't tow it. <laughs> But, like, you know, we both, like, oh, we were just fucking laying in the street, like, laughing hysterically because I almost just got punched in the head for towing the cable car. But, uh, that was the last time I did that. <laughs>